This is a presentation about total knee adjuvant therapy for rectal cancer. Over the last several decades, there have been considerable advances in the management of rectal cancer, in particular with regards to knee adjuvant treatments with radiation and improvements in the quality of the surgery with the principles of total mesorectal excision. It's important to mention that while the quality of the surgery has improved, the quality of the radiation has improved as well with better tumor targeting uh, and better modeling um, to uh, enable uh, enhanced delivery of radiation to the primary site with less um, collateral damage. All of this um, has been targeting uh, local recurrence rates. And in fact, local recurrence rates have uh, dropped significantly over the last few years uh, down to what would be regarded as the standard of 5% in 2020. Unfortunately, however, while local recurrence rates have improved a lot over the last few years, and the rates of distant recurrence uh, have not really changed very much. And in fact, uh, approximately, um, there's an approximately 30% distant failure rate, which now uh, largely exceeds that of local recurrence. This is the traditional uh, treatment pathway for advanced rectal cancer. So usually you start with knee adjuvant, uh, either long course or short course radiation, followed by a wait period, followed by surgery, uh, and then chemotherapy, uh, followed by closure of ileostomy last. It's quite a long process. It can take up to a year from the day we meet the patient till the day we close their ileostomy and they leave hospital. Um, and one of the drawbacks of this process is that, in fact, uh, the most toxic component of the treatment is in the middle. And so uh, a significant proportion of patients never get their chemotherapy because they've had complications from the surgery or that by the time they get to the chemotherapy, they've already had radiation, they've had a very long treatment journey, and they're just sick of it, and they refuse to have the chemotherapy. Um, this uh, problem is well documented, um, and uh, the lack of compliance with chemotherapy uh, is a well-known issue uh, in these patients. We looked at our uh, outcomes of pelvic exenteration at our hospital at the Royal Adelaide. Um, these are you know, the patients with the worst cancers, the ugliest tumors that are locally advanced. Um, all of these patients had either a posterior or a total exenteration, uh, indicating pretty significant disease. What surprised us is that 30% uh, of these patients didn't get any chemotherapy, and uh, that was be mainly because of the high rate of uh, postoperative complications that meant that they uh, were never able to have their chemotherapy. And these are the worst patients. So as a result of this uh, issue um, and the fact that local recurrence rates are now very low, but distant, recurrence, distant failure is high, there has been a thought as to whether we should be moving the chemotherapy earlier um, so that patients have this before the surgery. Now, this is termed total knee adjuvant therapy. Um, in this instance, the patients have all their uh, radiation and chemotherapy prior to surgery and then have their surgery last. The seminal paper which described this uh, was from Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, this was really the first uh, large uh, group of patients uh, where this treatment was discussed and uh, the outcomes were presented. Uh, it was a retrospective cohort study where 811 patients uh, with uh, locally advanced uh, rectal cancer were uh, treated with T were treated e either with uh, TNT in the new period, 400 patients or traditional chemo-RT and adjuvant chemotherapy in the previous period. Uh, the, uh, interestingly, um, uh, the, uh, some of the patients in the TNT group did have post-operative chemotherapy, but in fact, the compliance with the chemotherapy was 100% by definition because all the patients in the TNT group had chemotherapy. Whereas in the traditional group, you can see here, um, over 20% of patients got no chemotherapy at all. Um, the other important finding is that the TNT group uh, had their ileostomy closed much sooner, and that's because they didn't have to wait for chemotherapy to be delivered. Uh, there was a significantly higher rate of complete clinical response and a significantly higher rate of pathological complete response if the chemotherapy is given first. Uh, this then led to a prospective study, a phase two trial uh, by the same group. Um, here, they had four groups of patients. The group one had traditional treatment, so long course followed by surgery and adjuvant chemo. Uh, and then groups two and three and four uh, all had TNT, but with different amounts of chemotherapy, two cycles, four cycles, and six cycles. Uh, this shows that 
the groups in the, in the all the TNT groups had a very high compliance rate with chemotherapy, whereas uh, group one over 30% of patients did not get any chemotherapy, which is what we would have expected. Uh, there was no difference at baseline between the stages of the patients in the different groups uh, or tumor height or what sort of surgery they had. There was quite a big difference in the uh, pathological complete response rates, and this response rate seems to be higher with the more chemotherapy given. So if you can see here in subgroup four who had the most induction chemotherapy or in their TNT protocol, there was a 37% complete uh, pathological response rate, which is staggering. Uh, this also resulted in an improvement in disease-free survival. There was no difference between the TNT groups, but any patient in the TNT group had a higher disease-free survival than the patients in the standard group. There was no difference in overall survival. There have been three randomized trials looking at TNT. All of these are completed, but they're yet to be published. Um, they were all presented this year at the ASCO meeting. Uh, I'll briefly go through these, but essentially they all show uh, improved outcomes. The Rapido trial uh, was a Dutch study looking at TNT with short course radiation and, and then chemotherapy versus standard long course, uh, demonstrated a higher pathological complete response rate and a higher disease-free survival. Prodige 23 was a French study which looked at uh, TNT with long course versus standard long course. Again, higher rates of pathological response and disease-free survival, so this is significant. OPRA was an interesting one because uh, this was a study from MSK, which is their third study. Uh, this, in this study, the, this randomized trial, the patients had TNT in both arms, but with different sequencing. So in one group, they had radiation followed by chemo followed by surgery. In the other group, they had chemotherapy first followed by radiation and then surgery. Well, what they found is that, uh, firstly, the complete clinical response rates were very high in both groups, but they were higher if the radiation is given first. And in fact, 58% of patients, uh, which is an unbelievably high number, got a complete clinical response if the radiation was given followed by chemotherapy. So to summarize the evidence for TNT, um, there certainly appears to be improved compliance with chemotherapy higher rates of uh, complete tumor response and higher rates of disease-free survival, but not overall survival. Uh, and then the added benefit of less time with an ileostomy. There are some drawbacks. Uh, the main one is that more patients get chemotherapy. And uh, some of these patients, that will be over treatment because the chemotherapy may not make any difference to their outcomes. Uh, the chemotherapy is associated with increased cost and toxicity related to that. Uh, the randomized data is not published yet, although that should come later this year and early next year. And it's still a little bit unclear if we should be giving chemo first or radiation first, um, even though there might be a higher complete response rate with radiation first, we don't really know if there's a difference in disease-free survival um, and if this, this is the same for all tumors. Uh, there has been one other study uh, which has already been published comparing chemotherapy first versus radiation first. Um, this study was the Cairo 12 uh, trial, uh, which was published a couple of years ago. In this trial, 306 patients uh, were randomized. They all had surgery regardless of response, so basically the surgery was mandated. Um, the main finding of this study was that compliance was better with whatever treatment was given first. So if you give the radiation first, more people get radiation. If you give the chemo first, more people get chemotherapy. Uh, because compliance reduces as you go down the line. Um, interestingly, this study also found that uh, radiation before chemotherapy had a higher PCR rate. The weaknesses of the study, uh, and the reason it doesn't quite apply to our setting, is that uh, only three cycles of Folfox were given in the TNT group, which is about half what we would normally give. Um, the oxali oxaliplatin was given with the long course, which is not something that's standard in Australia and New Zealand. And there were different wait times after radiation, which probably accounted for the difference in the PCR rate. So this is where we currently stand with total knee adjuvant therapy. Um, at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, we have decided to uh, employ a personalized algorithmic approach, which basically means that we decide on radiation versus chemotherapy first, depending on the biology of the tumor at presentation and depending on the, in the initial staging. Um, so some patients get radiation first and others get chemo first, and these groups are predefined. Um, 
you may have seen this slide before. Um, rectal cancer can be divided into the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good tumors are the ones that are early stage um, that don't require any adjuvant treatment. At the Royal Adelaide Hospital, these patients are recommended to have surgery. The bad tumors are the ones that metastasize early and have a higher rate of distant failure. So the typical one of these would be a small tumor with an earlier T stage, but more advanced N stage uh, with isolated uh, resectable metastases or with EMVI. This group of patients at the Royal Adelaide gets chemotherapy first because we believe that's the most important component of their care. And then you have the ugly tumors. The ugly tumors are the ones that need exenterations essentially uh, that we talked about before. So these are typically locally advanced tumors, but with less propensity for distant failure. These patients get radiation first in our protocol because that's the most important component of their knee adjuvant treatment. So this is the actual protocol at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. We call it PTNT, personalized TNT. Um, I'll take away some of the fat. So basically for the ugly tumors, uh, the patients get long course chemo radiation. Then they get consolidation chemotherapy, which is eight cycles of Folfox or six cycles of Kpox. Um, and then they're assessed. Uh, and if they haven't had a complete clinical response, they have an operation. For the bad tumors, again, the protocol is very specific, but essentially the patients get induction chemotherapy. So they get uh, eight cycles of Folfox or six cycles of Kpox up front followed by long course chemo radiation and then assessment of response uh, after a 10 week wait. If they have a resectable liver met or something like that, then that's dealt with in the wait period. So just some data from so far. So the personalized TNT protocol has been running for all patients with locally advanced rectal cancer at the Royal Adelaide um, and the associated private hospital since January, 2019. Since that time, 141 patients with rectal cancer have been discussed at the MDT. Uh, there have been 61 eligible patients. And so these were patients with locally advanced tumors with curative intent or patients that had early cancer but refused surgery and therefore went on to have TNT. Uh, of those 61 patients, 53 patients were actually given TNT. Six patients refused uh, uh, to have this and two uh, were palliated before treatment was started. I should mention that we have ethics approval for this protocol uh, and all patients go into a prospective database with fairly high quality uh, data entry related to that. So in summary of the 53 patients, fairly young, a preponderance of males uh, and mostly primary rectal cancers. There were a few uh, recurrent rectal cancers and these were patients that were treatment naive beforehand and so had TNT. Um, there's, a, there's the stage breakdown, so a pretty high rate of stage three and four tumors, but occasional stage ones and twos, and these were largely patients that uh, either had EMVI or declined to have surgery. 21% um, had T4 cancer um, with fairly low tumor, lots of EMVI, and a few lateral nodes, so pretty bad biology disease overall. 40% of patients had induction chemotherapy, so these were the bad tumors. 60% had consolidation, so these were the, uh, the ugly tumors. Most had long course and most had Kpox and Folfox. Compliance with chemotherapy was actually really good. Uh, we've had 32 patients that have now completed the study uh, period. Uh, of those, 27 uh, had all the chemotherapy delivered. And another four um, had at least four cycles. So 98% 98, 98 of patients had at least four cycles of chemotherapy, which is actually quite good. Uh, there were three grade four toxicities from the chemotherapy. Two patients had uh, neutropenic colitis and ended up in ICU with this, and one patient had febrile neutropenia, again, ended up in ICU, uh, but no actual other source of sepsis related to that. And nobody died as a result of the chemotherapy. So in terms of the assessment, uh, 26 patients have had a, their primary uh, already assessed, uh, and of these, 54% have had a complete clinical response with nothing uh, visible in the primary. Uh, a further 46% have had a partial response and there was no progression in the pelvis. Eight patients had isolated uh, distant disease treated with curative intent. 62% um, of these patients had a complete clinical response. And another 12.5% had a partial response. Two patients progressed on treatment. Um, So in general, the outcomes have been uh, surprisingly good, in particular with regards to the complete clinical response, but there are some practical issues that need to be addressed. 
Um, it is somewhat difficult to coordinate these patients um, as surgeons and surgical teams were not particularly used to having surgery at the end. Uh, and so there's a lot of work that goes into trying to coordinate that. Um, because this is fairly new treatment, uh, you need uh, someone to collect the data. Um, we're lucky at the Royal Adelaide in that we have Joe Perry and Tracy Fitzsimmons who basically run the show with the TNT. They organize everything and collect all the data. Um, because of the high complete clinical response rate, uh, you know, the surgery is canceled two weeks before in 50% of patients that decline surgery if they're going to go down the non-operative management pathway. And this is particularly uh, challenging in patients that initially would need a, an exenteration. So you have an all-day list with, you know, multiple surgeons and teams in there, and then two weeks before there's no tumor left and the surgery is canceled. And that's great for the patient, but it does, um, it is a bit of a logistical challenge. Um, and then there's a huge outpatient surveillance burden because half the patients now don't have any tumor left and therefore need regular flexi SIGs and MRIs. Um, we have had a couple of patients get to the end of their treatment and refuse surgery, even though they haven't had a complete clinical response. Um, essentially, the compliance issue has now shifted to surgery as opposed to chemotherapy because by the time they get to the surgery, they may not want it anymore or have complications that mean they can't have it. Um, the patients now expect a complete clinical response, even though they're consented appropriately. When you say there's a 50% chance, they automatically think that they're going to be in the 50% group. And obviously, there's a surveillance burden on the patients, uh, the ones that have a complete clinical response with frequent flexi SIGs and MRIs. Um, there are some technical issues related to the surgery. Uh, it's hard to know uh, what to do with a disappearing liver met. The, the surveillance protocols are not as well defined for liver mets as they are for the primary tumor. Um, we, the volume of rectal cancer surgery has halved in our hospital since we started doing this. Um, and potentially the surgery could be complicated uh, because it's been placed at the end after all the chemotherapy. Uh, we are pretty certain we're going to have some recurrences after the complete clinical response, and it remains to be seen uh, if that makes the surgery more complicated for us. There are also some scientific issues. Um, does TNT actually improve overall survival? Is it cost effective, considering some patients are being overtreated? And is a personalized approach, you know, where we select induction versus consolidation, better than just picking a horse and sticking with it. In fact, the answers to all of these are unknown and they are currently under investigation. So should everybody be getting TNT? Um, I don't think so, actually. I don't think we're at the point where TNT is the standard of care, although that, that's, that day might come. I think we're in the early adoption phase. Uh, there are still lots of practical and academic issues that still need to be addressed. And at the very least, uh, we should probably wait for publication of RCT data before we can wholesale recommend TNT. Until that time, um, I think it is vitally important that if patients are going to start having TNT at your hospital, that you obtain ethics approval and prospective data collection, uh, particularly if the patients aren't going to be having surgery when they get a complete response, because currently that remains not the standard of care. And because of the increased rate of patients getting a complete clinical response, the data for these patients ha has to be collected uh, so that any issues can be identified early and acted on. One way to do this is to enroll patients to the RENO trial. The RENO trial is a prospective study looking at complete clinical response patients. Um, and uh, it recently opened an arm that will allow TNT with consolidation chemotherapy. Thank you very much.